throughout time, there have been men to whom justice has been more important than life itself. From these ranks come four men, prepared to fight valiantly on the side of justice, wherever the need may be. Joined together in this cause, they are the Four Just Men. One thousand pesos. One doesn't find workmanship like that in our country, Sir Walter. That is why we come to Barlings. I can't think how many millions upon millions of pesos we've printed for the National Bank of Giron. You know, Senior Vidal, it must be 70 years since your people first came to my grandfather. 70 years. How I envy your English, um, stolidity. Shall we say solidity? <laughs> my deplorable English. In my country, we have no solidity, no tradition, all the time change. I really must thank you, Sir Walter. A big note issue like this called for the utmost discretion, and that you have given us. I am most grateful. The note's ready, Miss Anderson? Yes, Sir Walter. The five million pesos have been checked and packed in a suitcase, as Senor Vidal asked. The guards are taking it to his car. I take it you'll check the notes. We'll send our usual invoice to the embassy. Yes, and thank you once again. <laughs> Come in a minute, will you please, Miss Anderson? <coughs> oh, get me the Caron Embassy. Caron Embassy, please. You have the number. Senior Vidal left his letter. Oh, and um, remind me to send this invoice in the mail tonight, will you? I have a message for Senor Vidal. Yes, Vidal. V-I-D-A-L. You have no Senor Vidal? Yeah, I'll speak to him. One moment, please. Thank you very much. This is Sir Walter Barling speaking. I'm inquiring for Senor Vidal. Yes, ma'am, Vidal. Enrique Vidal of the Banco Nacional. But that's impossible. Why, he's just left here a minute ago. Well, of course I'll take your word for it. Checkmate. <laughs> Jock, it's indecent to be so pleased about the winning of a mere game. Oh, I've not noticed you're too sad, Mr. Manford, when you win yourself. Well, that's quite different. At least I don't make a noise like the skirl of the bagpipes. Hello? Oh, just a moment. It's uh, Lady Barling, sir. Oh. Hello, Alice. Ben, it's all rather terrifying. It's Walter. He needs your help desperately. Well, can I talk to him? No, he can't. He's unconscious. A blow over the head. Look, do what you can for him until I arrive. I'll call the police and I'll be right across. Well, I'm the one that hit him over the head. You see, he was trying to commit suicide. You know, Walter, shooting yourself won't solve the problem. There's Alice to think of. And a firm with a reputation like Barlings is worth fighting for. After this, Barlings is finished. We depend on our reputation. 
When that's gone... Oh, but you've done nothing wrong, Walter. The right or wrong of it is unimportant. What matters is that I've become a figure both tragic and comic. I'm the fool who let himself be swindled into printing five million pesos in unauthorized banknotes. I'm the clown who tried to blow his brains out and couldn't even do that because I was clouded over the head by my wife. But need the story come out at all? I'm afraid the police should be notified. A million pounds worth of banknotes printed from the official plates and undetectable from the real ones, it's hardly a matter that can be hushed up. No, no. Unless we could recover the banknotes before they leave England. Ben, is that possible? Now, tell me, Walter, exactly what happened. Give Ben a drink, my dear. Well, the order to print the notes came from the embassy in the usual way. The official seals, the proper papers signed by the ambassador, of course, that must have been a forgery. A very effective one. You printed the notes. Yes. And when they were ready, I wrote and informed the ambassador. Vidal turned up as the official courier to collect them. Everything seemed quite normal. He seemed to have the right credentials. Obviously, somewhere along the line, your letters to the ambassador had been intercepted. Are any further letters required? A confirmation of delivery, for example? Oh, indeed, yes. And the last thing I said to that thug Vidal was that I'd put our invoice into the mail tonight. And have you? Uh, no. I was, um, otherwise occupied. Good. Your omission may prove useful. Hmm? The ambassador of the Republic of Goron requests the pleasure of the company of Sir Walter and Lady Barling at a reception in honor of General Porfirio de Santos. You must go, Walter. How could he face the ambassador now? Yes, I'm an accessory to swindling his country out of five million pesos. Well, it might look that way if Barlings aren't represented. Anyway, the swindle isn't completed yet. Now, try not to worry too much, Alice. I'll find my own way out. You get some sleep. And I'll see you first thing in the office in the morning, even if you have to be carried there on a stretcher. Good night. You ought to be in bed today, Sir Walter. I'll survive. Leave this invoice for me, Miss Anderson. That'll be all for the moment. Thank you. She's been with me for 20 years. You don't suspect her of intercepting my letters? No, frankly, no. I think it'll be too difficult to intercept them here or at the post office. The obvious place is the embassy. Have you seen this? The Santos. That's the man I'm invited to meet at the embassy. Yes, I understand that General de Santos isn't exactly backward in his political ambitions. What are you suggesting? You obviously must not send that invoice to the embassy, but you must send a letter to the ambassador accepting his invitation. If my guess is right, the person who's waiting for that invoice will think the letter is it. I'll be there to see what happens. I wonder if you could help me. Certainly, sir. I'm thinking of visiting Goro. I understand there's lots to see, magnificent mountains and beaches. Why, yes, sir. Perhaps you would like to look at these from the State Tourist Department. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. That's the lot for Sunny Goro. Thank you. You know, that is what I call beautiful architecture. Ah, yes. That is San Vicente. I was born there. Well, actually, it's big game hunting I'm really interested in. Big game hunting? Yes. It's... I'll take the ambassador's mail, Carmen. Oh, surely we've met before. Um, the Hotel Palazzo at Montevideo. Uh, Senor Dominguez, I'm Manfred. I don't recall. Oh, yes. Yes, he's here. I remember very well. It's for it you, was... Senor Dominguez. You take it here. Yes, Dominguez speaking. Has the invoice from Barnings arrived? What with the delay? I can't discuss that now. You know we've been waiting for that invoice since this morning. I must work on the receipt and there isn't much time. I'll be straight across. Oh. 
Thank you very much. He has the invoice. Nevertheless, I was worried. And I was worried for you, Senor Vidal. Why didn't you ask for the invoice when you were there? You do not understand the English character, Colonel. Everything must be done in the proper way. Barling said he would put it into the mail. And the English are men of their word. To think that the whole future of Geron depends on that slip of paper. The money is here. I advise you to take the first plane out. And what about the reception this evening? You'll have plenty of receptions later. If he's not there tonight, someone might suspect. Vidal is right. Why risk suspicion now? Let Barlings have their seat duly signed by His Excellency, the Ambassador. Let them listen to my impeccable Republican sentiments tonight. You are too impatient, Colonel. A week more and we shall be in San Vicente with five million pesos. The army is behind me to a man. I can see it now. We sow the inflation rumors. We release our notes. The Banco Nacional can only lock its doors. The crowds are angry. At first the police are called out, then the troops. And at the very moment when the government is ripe to fall, a savior appears. Who will put an end to misrule and corruption? The Santos! The Santos! The Santos! Dorchester Hotel. Take more than Sir Walter Barling to detect that. There you are, General. I'm so sorry for the delay. It didn't arrive until the second post. I don't understand. My dear Ambassador, may I express my profoundest apologies that owing to an indisposition, I find myself unable to attend the reception tonight in honor of General De Santos. As I would naturally wish Barling and Sons to be represented, I have asked one of my co-directors, Mr. Ben Manfred, to come in my place. Yours sincerely, Walter Barling. Someone should have foreseen that Barling would be invited to the reception. Suppose this Manfred talks to the ambassador. It won't be easy to keep them apart. He might mention the note issue. That leaves only one course of action. Senor Manfred will not attend the reception. I've checked with the airline, Mr. Manfred. General DeSantis is flying to Guran tonight, the 9 o'clock plane. But immediately after the reception. He hasn't got much time. Well, neither have I. Well, that will be your New York call. Hello? Mr. Ryder? One moment. Hello, Jeff. Yes? What about De Santos? Well, so far as government has managed to keep him under control. But the inside story here is that he's waiting to take the first possible crack at becoming dictator. It looks as though he doesn't intend to wait much longer. No, from the State Department angle, that would be a disaster. The recent loan has helped Guron to get on its feet. De Santos was just about flatten the country. What's he planning? A rigged banknote issue. Five million phony pesos that can't be detected. Once he floods the country with them, especially a small country like Goron, there'd be chaos. Even if the authorities had the serial numbers, it would be impossible to trace them all quickly enough. In a week, public confidence is destroyed, the banks close, all currency is called in. 
government resigns and De Santos takes over. That's quite a scheme. Can I help at this end? Well, there's just a chance I can stop it here. If not, stand by for a call. I may want you to fly down to Goron. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, to avoid further delay, I will introduce one man who needs no introduction. General Porfirio de Santos, commander of the armed forces of the Republic. Your Excellency. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, the ambassador has been too complimentary. The truth is, I'm a plain soldier, short of words, and devoted to his country. Are you hurt? I'm all right. You stay here with the money. You understand? I'll get Manfred. Sir so Dominguez. Manfred. <laughs> Mr. Manfred, this is an unexpected pleasure. Yes, I was rather surprised that I was able to make it. I'm afraid the General has already begun his speech. Oh, I'm more than sorry to miss it. But I wanted to have a word with you anyway. <laughs> yes, but not about big game hunting. Very well, why don't you come this way? Please, sit down. Now, Mr. Manfred, what can I do for you? Well, I wanted to uh, talk oh, to you. Oh, allow me. I think you'll find these are excellent. They are specially selected for us by the Cuban government. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I wanted to talk to you this evening as a representative of Barlings. Indeed. Yes, I brought the invoice with me for the banknotes that were delivered to you yesterday. Thank you. There must be some mistake. This invoice is made out to General de Santos. Well, the uh, money was printed for de Santos, wasn't it? Surely it's right that he should have the invoice, too. Senor Gomez, your hand. It's nothing. A slight accident with my car. Darlings were tricked into printing that money. I want it back. If you would only listen to me, Mr. Manfred, I can give you a perfectly good explanation. I don't want explanations. I want the money. I protest. I can assure you. You can keep your assurances and give me the money. Oh, very well. I know how to deal with this. Put that down, my friend. Search him, Dominguez. You know, Colonel, you should take some driving lessons. I know an excellent instructor. Is there some place we can keep him till we can dispose of him? Upstairs. Some of his servants' rooms are empty, but not until after the guests have gone. It's time the general was leaving. Tell him everything's under control. Sit down. You might as well make yourself comfortable while you can. Thank you. That's most thoughtful of you. I don't know what you expect to gain from this. In case of accidents, I've deposited a detailed report of all that's happened. By the time that's found, General de Santos will be in Garon with the five million pesos. Yes? Senor Gomez, the police wish to see you about your accidents. 
I told you under no circumstances to leave the car. The chauffeur was a witness. Now, sir, were you the driver of the crash car number BFG 858? Yes, I was. Look, Sergeant, no one was hurt. I'll pay for any damage. Uh, it's not as simple as that, sir. Uh. Don't you know that when two vehicles are in a collision, it's your duty to report to the police? But the other car belongs to General DeSantos. I'm his aide. Have you any papers? Driving license? Sergeant, this seems to be between you and the two gentlemen here. So, uh, with your permission, I'll leave you. Certainly, sir. I do hope you cleared it up, Colonel. I'm sorry, sir. I mistake a statement. Won't take long. But this is embassy ground. You've no right here. In that case, sir, I must ask you to step down to the station. Goodbye, General, or should I say President de Santos? Believe me, I haven't enjoyed telling you this. It doesn't put Barlings in too good a light. On the contrary, I'm overwhelmed. They are a security force in themselves. Mr. Manfred. You haven't told me anything that I didn't suspect long ago. Now, if you will accept my thanks, I have a long-distance call to make. There will be no flags for the Santos tomorrow. In Geron, we know how to deal with traitors. Good night, Your Excellency. Good night, Mr. Manfred. Thank you, Ben. What else can I say? There goes a dream of power. Yes, and DeSantos was a dreamer, all right. Dreams like his have a way of coming true. We don't have to go far back into history to prove that. Well, there goes the last of five million pesos. Except for this one. <laughs>